craziest thing that's ever been put into golf is restriction. This machine of yours is so well put together. It just needs the right command for you to perform. And putting restrictions on that, like big freaking handcuffs, is the last thing you want to do. This should have been annihilated 30 years ago. It's taken many of your beautiful, important golf days away from you. Enough is enough. Let me show you the real way to use this machine. Watch Moo as he's hitting a few of these shots in his speed training. He's just gliding around his axis of rotation and he's maintaining this beautiful speed of 150 to 150 miles per hour. This is not ball speed here, people. This is club speed. And his, you know, ball speed is 205 plus plus. So you notice how nicely he's gliding around that axis. And notice how all of his body parts are moving together. And so if you look at feet together, knees together, go to feet together drill. We got about seven videos on that. It's the best drill ever because as soon as your arms go into the backswing, something has to go in the equal and opposite direction to counterbalance that. So you'll feel your butt swivel toward the target. So notice how both of my femurs, half my knee is my femur, my femur is my hip. And then you'll look at the rib cage and the pelvis. Look at the beautiful human spine. And you notice how the vertebrae are stacked one on top of each other like Lego blocks. There's only one degree of range of motion between each one of those vertebrae. So for you to resist in the backswing, why would you resist here? When you lock this up, you lock the pelvis up. If the pelvis gets locked up, then the rib cage can't turn. Now you're trying to move these arms against the rib cage. You're gonna get separated ribs. You're gonna get discectomies. You're gonna get slip discs. You're gonna get herniated discs. Who wants that? Golf is not an impact sport. It's not, you know, it's not a collision sport. So we're gathering out of the way. You look at what Bryson DeChambeau is doing in the last three years, he raised the bar. Is getting everything out of the way in the backswing, allowing all of the body parts to glide. So when I'm looking at a baseball pitcher and that baseball pitcher is doing a nice motion, notice we're gliding around and we're getting that momentum, that precious momentum gathered. So when Bryson decided to go for more speed, he had to respect what the human body was doing. And the first thing he did was get out of the way and come up. This is what we do best. Half the knee is the femur and the femur is the hip. So for both femurs to rotate, you notice how the knees have to give. Notice how my head is going to move upwards. This is what we do best as humans on the planet. You want to go skating? You want to get on a swing and you want to pump the swing to go higher? You want to get on a skateboard and you want to pick up speed down the back side of that, you know, hump. You're going to squat and push on that skateboard and you're going to go up and down like a piston. So for you to stay same, same, don't move the legs, keep the legs steady. That is an absolute ridiculous way to go about anything with this machine. So in order for the arms to swing freely, do this with me, drop the club, get up in your living room. You're going to bend forward, and let your arms hang in front of you. Okay. So remove the left arm out of the way, raise the right arm. All you're going to do is let the right arm swing past you and towards the wall. Here we go. Let it swing past you. So the arm swings past and is swinging freely from that shoulder socket. Notice what the brain had to do. It had to go to the ground, use the ground to get the body out of the way to allow that arm to swing past you. You would never do this. And then add speed to that. Are you kidding me? 
So, all because we're afraid of making the wrong moves. Isn't that crazy? So, you do the same thing with the left arm for the backswing. Let the left arm swing past you in the backswing. Notice Moose swing. Notice my swing. Notice Savannah's swing. I just hit 170 miles an hour, both right-handed and left-handed this week. Look at these swings. So there is zero restriction going into the backswing because that's like a left-handed follow-through for my right-handed swing. And my right-handed follow-through is my left-handed backswing. So you notice how when you're going towards the follow-through, look at how the knee is rotating in and coming right in and up. Well, we're doing the same thing in the backswing, creating a mirror image. Because the machine is a self-preserving reflex action, I want to punch towards you. The first thing my brain's going to do is go to the ground and shift weight. Then it's going to remove my body out of the way with that pressure point, and now I have access to snapping my punch. I'm going to do the same thing for throwing the ball, and then I'm going to do the same thing for throwing a club. So watch. If I take this club and throw it in that curtain, wasn't that gorgeous? Look at that in slow motion. Watch how beautiful that is. The first thing my brain does as I get to the top is it goes to the ground. It uses the ground to get my body out of the way, and then notice the lag on that, and then boom, it's throwing the club that way. Make sure you see all my videos on throwing the club. Get into an open space, get some old clubs, and make sure there's nothing behind you because many of you are going to throw it that way and that way. So make sure there's nothing in the parking lot behind you because you're going to be throwing a club through somebody's windshield if you're not used to doing this properly. So you start off with some gentle throws into the range here, and then you pick up the pace, and then when you're able to throw the club, um, my, my longest throw so far has been 72 yards. It's amazing what your swing is going to look like. So now all we have to do is put a ball in the way of that swing. So I've got my intermediate point. I'm going to set up above the ball, and I'm going to gather my backswing and throw the club to the right of that intermediate point. So I lower my club to the grass, and now it feels like, hey, if I throw the club that way, it feels like I'm going to catch the ball nicely. All right, what's it feel like when I throw the club that way? So I gather my throw and throw it out there. Look at how beautiful that is. Isn't that gorgeous? So that's a seven iron blade level, and I just threw that for 183 yards carry, which I just went up a club lately, thanks to Moo and Sav and thanks to the people at Catalyst. And so now we've got some, some really solid, and you, you hear how solid that ball contact was? There was nothing for me to worry about because this machine is attached. Look, I take this club. The club is, the club is attached to the shaft. The shaft is attached to my arms. The arms are attached to the shoulders. Now when I throw it, all it's gonna do is beautiful circles. So watch as I swing back and through. It just creates these beautiful circles and the club, all I have to do is pay attention to where that club is passing in front of me. So I'm going to throw the club. Throw the club. Throw the club. If you do this and then the kinetic chain engages, so it's uh, resist. Now my arms are stuck behind me. I can't throw from here, number one. So that's why I say, well, you got to keep your arms in front of you. Okay, so I'm now I got my arms in front of me. And if I coil this up really tight, and then I try to, sh to throw my club toward the target, my brain is going to go to the ground, use the ground to get my body out of the way. I'm at the end of my rope. I will rip something apart especially at 58. So Rory at age 16, when he was doing that, broke one of his ribs right at the base of his spine, 
one of his upper ribs. Brant Snedeker separated a rib out of it. He was in the top five at the time, on fire, gone, never came back. He's still struggling right now because he's hurt. Mike Weir separated a rib. Tiger Woods, two discectomies, three discectomies. Graham Dillette, the list goes on of careers ended by this. This is not a joke. Gather freely in the backswing. If you throw the club through the, the ball and intermediate point, the brain's gonna go to the ground. Use the ground to get the body out of the way. Look at this coming through. Everything you want is right here. And then we allow that to rip right through into that picture. So now I've got this beautiful relaxed body. And as soon as I throw to the target, everything starts to click through and it'll have that beautiful tone for you, the right amount of tone. And then you'll have all the distance with very little effort that you're looking for. I mean, like I want to play golf till I'm 120 years old without having to, you know, worry about what's going to fall apart next. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want more information, please go to our website at wisdomandgolfpremium.com and we're going to show you how to put this together. Go to Wisdom and Golf 2.0, right out of the gates, a beautiful series of how we go about teaching this. You can go to the beginner series, go to beginner series on there, or the senior series, which is a very similar all around series. And then once you feel like you've got a little bit of what we do and you feel like, hey, I think I get the gist, send me your video of face on and down the line and I will point you to the next series of videos that you need to get to your next level and really enjoy this game, all right? All the best, see you next week.